This is Pastor Dean's Sermon Archive. Pastor Dean is author, speaker, and senior pastor at Living Faith Church in Hermiston, Oregon. Today, Pastor Dean shares with us the significance of praying the prayer of Jabez each day as a part of our daily prayer time. After you've listened to today's podcast, we would appreciate it if you would review it as your feedback helps others discover the podcast and find the life and freedom they are searching for in Jesus Christ. Now, here's Pastor Dean with today's message. We are wanting to be authentic disciples that stand victorious in a pagan, woke culture. We want to be authentic disciples that stand victorious in a postmodern, hedonistic culture. Come on, amen? Amen. We're not going to give in. We're not going to give up. We're not going to back up. We're not going to apologize. We're not going to compromise. You don't compromise with the enemy. wouldn't, Wouldn't you think, wouldn't you think that leaders would look at what happened between Neville Chamberlain and Hitler and look at what happened when we tried when we tried to to compromise and 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 apologize for what went on in in Vietnam wouldn't you think we would get it by now that you cannot negotiate and compromise with terrorists all they do is take that as a point of weakness to strengthen their position and take more territory Where do you suppose they get that strategy from? Right from the powers of darkness. That is Satan's MO. If he can get you to apologize and compromise, he will strengthen his position in your heart and he will take more territory so that he can take you down. No way. Not on our watch. Amen. We're going to stand. We're not going to back up. We're not going to compromise. We're not going to apologize. We are going to stand as authentic disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ that are born again and baptized in the Holy Spirit with our spiritual language so that we can transform our world. We can transform this generation and free this generation from the powers of darkness and the destructive works of sin. Come on. Amen. Not to be judgmental and critical. We're not going to beat people up with the Bible. Go out and thump them over the head with the Bible. We're going to bring the love of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit that sets people free. Scripture says it's the goodness of God that leads to repentance. And so what we do is we bring them the love of Jesus and the goodness of God and we share that with them. And watch Almighty God bring freedom and liberty to their life. Amen? Amen. It's amazing what happens with someone that doesn't know Jesus. And you say, can I pray for you? Do you know, I only one time, I can only think of one time in all my years of ministry, I had somebody say, no, don't pray for me. It it so took me by surprise. I, I honestly didn't know what to say. I said, well, okay. But I'm going to pray for you in private. (laughs) Come on, amen? Amen. Because people want prayer. And man, when you're an authentic disciple of Jesus, prayer works. Mm -hmm. Wow. Sometimes the most challenging time to pray is when we've been offended, when we've been hurt. Or we're going through a time of adversity. Our mind is reeling. Our emotions are high. And sometimes it's hard to get prayers out at that point. In fact, sometimes we want to yell at God. Ever been there? You want to go, God, what are you doing? Why did you let this happen? Don't you care? (laughs) And all of the above are lies from the enemy. Because he does see. 
He does know what's going on. He does care, and he is involved. It's just at that moment, your mind and your emotions are so reeling, you can't see God right at that moment. And the enemy wants to get you. He wants to, he wants to, he wants to weaken your faith or absolutely nullify your faith so that he can use that occasion of offense, that occasion of hurt, that occasion of adversity to try and build a stronghold in there. Right? Okay. <laughs> but, but here's what we know. We have a wonderful model of prayer that Almighty God has given to us that is really powerful in those times and those seasons. Here's, here's your first scripture. It's found in 1 Chronicles chapter 4. Okay. Chronicles is before the book of Psalms. Okay. So it's, it's, it's after, if you, if you find Judges or if you find Samuel, just keep going a little ways, you'll find it's after Samuel, after Kings, then there's Chronicles. How many found it? Okay. First Chronicles chapter four, verse 10. If you're there, holler amen. amen. Okay. Here's what it says. And Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. Look at this. So God granted him what he requested. Don't you love that last phrase? So God granted him what he requested. Now, you're going to want to stay. We're going to look at a lot of scriptures. But you're going to want to stay right there because the whole rest of the message is going to come out of this short prayer. What you may not know is that Jabez's birth was not easy. Apparently, his mom had a very difficult delivery with a lot of pain. And after he was born, she named her son, wasn't her first son, because he had brothers, but she named him Jabez, which means he will cause pain. Now, that name, no doubt, caused some very interesting times for him as a child. Okay, did you, did you ever have anybody make fun of your name? Make fun of you on the playground stuff? Make kind of, kind of tease you and torment you? Can you imagine what it was like if your name was, he will cause pain? Okay. I remember I was in all-state choir my senior year in high school in... Uh, Sitting right behind me in the alto section, I was in the first tenor section. Sitting right behind me in the alto section was a gal. Her name was Rose Bush. And, and I thought, what, what would possess a parent to do that to their daughter? And she, she, was, uh, she was a pretty little girl, but I just thought, why would you do that? To your daughter. I mean, it was bad enough for me. My name was Forrest. That's my first name. I go by my middle name. My first name was Forrest. And you can imagine what... Now, this was before it became a popular name. I mean, I was the only... Other than my dad, I was the only one that I knew that had the name Forrest. My dad and I were the only ones. Uh, all, all my growing up years, didn't know anybody else had that name. It became kind of a popular name later and, and, and kind of a cool name later. But at that time, it was anything but cool. I mean, I, you, you, I know all the jokes. I got them all down. Okay? And uh, so, but can you imagine? I don't know what it was that this mom was thinking about and what her attitude was. But what the scripture does say this about her, she says, because I bore him in pain, I'm going to name him Jabez. 
That kind of sounds to me like a woman with an attitude. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but you know what? That's not, that's not where he lived his life. He didn't live his life in that. In fact, the scripture says this about him. It says, Jabez uh, was more honorable than his brothers. Jabez refused to let that painful launch in life dictate the rest of his life. And this prayer reflects exactly how he stood that way. And it's such a lesson for you and I of how we can take times of adversity, we can take times of hurt, we can take times of offense, and instead of letting them be destructive in our life and negative in our life, we actually use them to become building stones in our life. And we, instead of letting it become something that blocks our prayer life, it actually launches our prayer life into a whole new level of praying that leads us into a level of victory in Jesus Christ that we would not have had before. Amen. Hear that again. Instead of those becoming negative in our life and points of defeat in our life, we actually use them for times of launching us into a prayer life that takes us into a victory that we have never had before. Amen. Not defeat. Amen? Amen? Let's look at it. Let's look at it. Look at that first phrase. Lord, that you would bless me. Jabez trusted the heart of Almighty God. Jabez trusted the heart of Almighty God. And, and God wants you to trust his father heart. But see, in our, in our culture, where divorce is so rampant, and where there's been such a breakdown in the family, and many of us have not had healthy relationships with our earthly fathers, we struggle with imagining a relationship with a heavenly father, and we emotionally tend to paint heavenly father with the same image that we have with our earthly father. I, I've had more than one time, more than 10 times, where I've had someone say to me, you know, I get it with Jesus. I'm good with Jesus. I don't like, I don't like the father thing. I can't, I can't relate to that. And I, and I understand why. They've had such a broken relationship. But almighty God, Jesus said, I've come to bring you to father. Because he wants to help you develop a trust for your heavenly father that you can trust his heart that you can know his heart for you is he loves you and he has your best at his heart see God wants to bless you he's not standing up there with a big hammer just ready to smack you every time you do something wrong He's not ready to yell at you and, and call you names when you mess up. Your heavenly father wants to bless you. Amen. I said your heavenly father wants to bless you. Come on. That's his desire is to fill your life with his blessings. Second Peter chapter 1 verses 2, 3, and 4 says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you through God... And our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called you to glory and virtue, whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. 
Heavenly Father wants to give you everything you need for life and to live a godly, victorious life. And he has given to you these amazing promises. And he keeps his promise. And he keeps his promise. That's why it says in Galatians chapter 3, it says that Christ was made a curse for us. He has delivered us from the curse, having been made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree. Listen, that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Christ, and that we might receive the Spirit through faith. See, God's blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Listen to what it says in Deuteronomy. So the blessings of Abraham. Well, what are those? Well, Deuteronomy 28 lists them. Deuteronomy 28 starts this way. It says, now, if you will obey the voice of the Lord our God and keep the commandments that I command you this day, He will set you above all the nations of the earth. Listen. And these blessings upon you. And in the Hebrew it says tackle you. (laughs) If you will obey the voice of the Lord your God. And what are those blessings? He said you'll be blessed in the city. You'll be blessed in the country. You'll be blessed in your home. You'll be blessed in your fields. You'll be blessed in your pantry. You'll be blessed in your children. You'll be blessed in your animals. You will be blessed when you go in. You'll be blessed when you go out. You'll be blessed when you rise up. You'll be blessed when you lie down. You'll be above only and not beneath. You'll be the head and not the tail. You'll be the lender, not the borrower. You'll get your rain in the seasons and your harvest will be bountiful. Anybody want that kind of blessing in your life? May I see your hand? May I see your hand? Anybody want those kind of blessings in your life? That's what Father's promised you. That's why it says in Psalm 1, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of the sinner, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in it doth he meditate day and night. That man shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, and its leaves will not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. I, I can keep going and going and telling you all the scriptures that says God wants your life blessed. That's God's heart for you. And what he wants you to do in your prayer life is he wants you to speak those blessings. You don't have to beg God. You don't have to cry to God. You don't have to try and convince God. You don't have to get good enough for God. Jesus Christ has made you accepted in the beloved. Come on, speak his blessings in your life. Lord, bless me. He didn't stop there. He said, and enlarge my territory. One translation says, enlarge my borders. Mm. He refused to let the negative situation define him. What are you allowing in your life that puts limits on you? Where are you putting them? Oh, I, I could never do that. Well, why not? The God of the impossible lives in you. Why not? Well, Pastor, you just, you just don't know where I come from. You're right, I don't. I know where I came from, and I know how God opened the doors to the unlimited to me. Amen. See, there, there comes a time when you and I need to pray this prayer out of Psalm 24. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. 
And you need to say to every door that is shut to you, I command you in the name of Jesus, lift up your heads, ye gates, be opened up before me. I refuse to live in the limits that Satan has put on my life. Now, I, I get it, okay? I'm not a builder. You don't want me to build a dog house for you. It'll fall down and kill your dog. <laughs> I'm not gifted that way, okay? You, you, don't, you probably don't want me to play guitar up here and sing, okay? That, thank God for the great guitarists and singers we have. Amen? Woo! Come on, amen? Come on, give them a praise. Okay? Yeah, there's a lot of, there's a, my skill set isn't that way. There's one thing of recognizing your skill set. There's another thing when you let the enemy keep you bound up by condemnation, by negativity, by fear, by shame, by guilt. You see what I'm talking about? There's those, see, those, those are things. There's another thing when, when you know you have a gift and a skill but out of intimidation, you don't use it. See, those are all limits. Jabez could have so easily let his start in life limit him and set his boundaries, but he didn't. He said, Lord God, enlarge my territories. And that's exactly what Heavenly Father wants to do for you. He wants to enlarge your territory. John 16, 33 says this. Jesus said to them, he said, These things I've spoken to you. That you may have peace in me. In the world, you will have tribulation. In other words, adversity, rejection, intimidation, condemnation, judgment, criticalness, people not liking you, people saying lies about you, hurts, offenses, all of that, that's all normal, that's normal life on planet earth. Can you say that with me? That's normal life on planet Earth. It's amazing to me how people go, well, I just don't know. They just did that to me. I just don't. You live on Earth. When you live in a fallen world, people act like sinners. And we're surprised? And we're surprised? Come on, really? So what do you do with that? Jesus said, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Also, the one that's overcome the world lives in me so I can be of good cheer because I don't live by the world's judgment of me. I live by the one who lives in me. That's how I live my life. And what did he say? He said, I know the thoughts I think of you, says the Lord. Thoughts that are good and not evil. To give you a future and a hope. Amen. Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the thoughts I think of Jesse. Thoughts of good and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. Amen. I could go, I could say every one of your names and that scripture applies to you. But then he goes on and says this. He says, call on me and pray. Seek me with all your heart and I will listen. How many of you did not know that prayer was directly connected to that scripture? So you know what? You can with confidence Go to God in prayer and say, God, I know you have a future for me and a hope. 
and you have good thoughts about me, not evil thoughts. And so I come to you with confidence. I can trust your heart. I can pray to you, and I know you're going to hear. I know you're going to listen, and I know you're going to answer. Come on. Come on. Give God a praise. Come on. Then he went on and said, Lord, that your hand would be upon me. <laughs> Jabez knew absolutely. God, I can't do this on my own. I can't do this in my own strength. I can't live this way by my own ability. Left to myself, I'm going to mess up. One other honest person in the room. Thank you, Loretta. Every last one of us in this room have been there. Come on. I got this. How did that work for you? I can do this. How you doing? We, we better just go ahead and say, Lord, may your hand be upon me. Come on, Amen. <laughs> Lord, may your hand be upon me because I know I can't do this. I can't live this way. I had one person say, you know what, Pastor Dean? I would give my life to Jesus, but I just know I can't live the life. I said, you're exactly right. Their eyes got like owl's eyes. I said, nobody can. Nobody can live the life. Are you kidding me? Come on. How holy can you live on your own? <laughs> you could do really, really good until you wake up in the morning. <laughs> then you're in trouble. And some of you mess up in your sleep. <laughs> Maybe I should say some of us mess up. In anyway. So what, how, how do we do that? Listen to the words of Jesus in John. Truly, truly, verily, verily in the old King James. Truly, truly, I say to you, he that believes in me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. If you ask anything in my name, look, it's tied directly to prayer. People going, oh, Pastor, I just don't think, I mean, I just don't think I could do that. I don't think, I mean, how, I don't think God could use me. How could God use me? Prayer, prayer. That's how it works. None of us can heal the sick. None of us can cast out devils. None of us can bring hope to people. It's only as we pray and God works through us. Come on, amen. amen. And so he gives that promise. I want you to do greater works than I did. How, Jesus? If you ask anything in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father that he will send you, listen, another helper that he may abide with you forever. How long is he going to be with you? Forever. Send you another helper that he may abide with you forever. Whom the world cannot receive, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. Look at his promise. You're not going to have to do this on your own. It's not going to be in your own strength. It's not going to be in your own power. It's going to be by the power of my Holy Spirit in you, working through you. He will enable you to live the blessed life. He will enable you to live the life I want you to live. He will enable you to live in the enlarged territory. He's going to enable you to live that life that I have promised that I see for you happening in your life. How many times have you prayed, Holy Spirit, empower me. Holy Spirit, enable me. Holy Spirit, work through me. Holy Spirit, I'm about to get up right now and go into my day. I can't do this without you. Come on, Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, I'm on my way to work. Will you help me? Oh, 
You know those crazy gals and guys I work with. Oh, Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, you know the F-bombs that are dropped every day. Don't let them stick in my brain. Holy Spirit, you know, you know the stuff. You know, you know the conflict. You know, Holy Spirit, you know. And listen, Holy Spirit wants to help you every day. He walks with you, and he wants to be your guide every day. Come on, amen? amen. That your hand would be upon me. And then, listen, then he addresses his identity. That I might not cause pain. See, he knows his natural flaw. Do you know your flaw? Do you know your default, what you always go to? Someone gets in your face. What's your default? <laughs> I'll fix your headlights, buddy. I'll show you. Come on, what's your default? Your default is, ah, you run home and you cocoon and you don't get out of bed for three days. What's your default? Come on. There are people that that is their default. What's your default? What's your default? See, what's your natural weakness? See, he knew his natural weakness. And he said, that's not how I don't want to live out of my natural man. I know they called me Jabez. I know they called me he will cause pain. I know that's, that's my natural default. But almighty God, I'm saying to you, I want to live by the new man of who I am in Jesus Christ. And not live by that man. I want to live by the new man. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Jabez passed away. And all things are new. And then the very next verse says, And all things are of God who has reconciled us unto himself by Jesus Christ. So that's who we are. We have Jesus living in us. We're a new creation. All that old stuff is gone, doesn't live anymore. I now am a new man. You're a new woman. I'm going to live out of that identity. I'm going to live by that life source. That's who I am. And I refuse to live by the old identity. I'm going to live by the new person I am in Jesus Christ. Wow. Almighty God has let us know adversity is normal. Getting hurt, that's just living on this earth. Going through hardships, that's just life. Experiencing reversals, you live in this world. You get offended. But I want to tell you, the most dangerous thing to your spiritual walk is offense. Amen. Living in offense, that's the most dangerous thing to your spiritual life. That's the most dangerous thing to your family. Living in offense. You know one of the difficult things about church? People. Yep. <laughs> Look around you. We're all weird. <laughs> However many people are in this room, probably around 180 in this room, that means we have 180 different personalities, 180 different backgrounds, 180 opinions. Actually, when you have 180 people, you probably have 360 opinions. <laughs> Your chances of getting offended are only like 100%. <laughs> really? People go, I didn't expect to get hurt at church. And I go, you're with people. What are you thinking? <laughs> well, yeah, but they're born again. I said, yeah, they're born again on their way to heaven, trying to get godly. I don't think they heard that, Pastor Aaron. <laughs> We're all trying to get godly. Amen. How many have it perfected? If you raised your hand, you just sinned. Yes. 
So the chances, but listen, that's the danger is for people in church to get offended and, and then hang on to that offense. That's the most dangerous thing to a house of God. Almighty God wants us to learn how to live out of this prayer of Jabez so that we don't hang on to that stuff. Come on, amen? amen. That we give each other exactly what God gave to us. As he said in Ephesians chapter 4, do not let the sun go down in your wrath, neither give place to the devil. And then he says, and grieve not the spirit by which we have been sealed to the day of redemption. And then he says, and forgiving one another as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Listen, dear ones, when we hang on to that offense, we grieve the Holy Spirit in us. When we grieve the Holy Spirit in us, we're weakening that very one who gives us the power to live victorious. But not only that, when we hang on to that, we give an area of jurisdiction to the enemy. Now, there are things that should make us angry. It should make you angry when some nut texting runs a red light and hits your car. What are you thinking? It, it should, there are things that should make you angry. But what did he say? He said, in your anger, don't sin out of that anger. So we don't handle other people the way the world handles other people. We handle them out of the Holy Spirit. We handle them out of God's hand upon us, enabling us not to cause pain. And so instead of giving them what they deserve, we give them what they don't deserve. The same way God gives us what we don't deserve. We don't deserve his mercy and grace. We don't deserve his forgiveness. We don't deserve the blessed life. But he gives it to us. And so we bless them in Jesus' name. We love them in Jesus' name. We do good to them in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Does this make sense? Yes. Don't hang on to that offense. Thank you for listening to Pastor Dean's Sermon Archive. If his message today encouraged you, please consider leaving a review or comment on his blog to let us know. You can find Pastor Dean's blog at fdeanhackett.com. Thank you again for listening.